All right, so this is just an eBay unboxing. Bought a lot of used stuff on eBay and I'm just opening it in front of the camera just in case a seller sent me something that wasn't as advertised. The heck? Do you want to play a game? Oh, Danny, would you like to play a game? You do your best not to be found, but I have finally found you. We've seen your show, your live streams, your LAN parties. Looks like a lot of fun, and a fun life. But are you all fun in games, or can you really build the best gaming PC when put to the test? You've been challenged to build the ultimate gaming PC. From spare parts, or whatever you can scrounge up for $400. Oh, Danny. Would you like... <laughs> oh, Danny. Would you like... Oh, no. Oh, Danny. I think the battery ran out. Whoever serious message this was, I'm sorry, but uh, the battery ran out and it is just repeating, so. Yo, but check out these evidence bombs, though. Okay, I accept the challenge. So as you just saw in the intro, I was invited to a budget PC build competition by three other tech content creators. They are Danny, other Danny, from PC Tech Hustle, Joe from Pinky Tech, and John from The Net Guy. The rules of this competition are pretty simple. Build the best gaming PC that you can for $400 and use it to compete in a four-way competition, which includes myself and the three other tech content creators. And we're gonna be scored in three categories. We have performance, aesthetics, and gaming skills. That's right, we're gonna be using these systems that we built to game against one another live on stream where you all can actually tune in uh, and watch. And at the end of it, we will all be selling our systems on jawa.gg where viewers like yourself have a chance at buying them. And more details on that later on in the video. But this right here is my entry to the competition. It's a combination of both new and used parts with most of the parts bought online. So I'd say it's pretty repeatable if you wanted to build something similar for yourself in this price range. I will say ahead of time though that this build is far from perfect. I actually have some gripes with it, which I'll discuss as we get through the video. Uh, so yeah, let's go over what's inside. I'm gonna mix up the order on how I present parts based on how I actually planned for this build. And I first started with the graphics card, which was this ASUS Dual RX 5700 XT. I was trying to spend no more than $150 here so that I could have enough left over to fill out the rest of the system decently. At that price range, this was the best card I can find. There were a handful of these going for $150-ish in my local area, which isn't too far off from eBay prices, but I was actually able to negotiate this one down to $120 from a seller on OfferUp. I actually documented this pickup in a video. Be sure to check that out if you haven't seen it yet. But this is a very solid card for sub $200. This card is not in pristine condition by any means. It's got some scratches on it, but it's perfectly functional and well worth the price that I paid. Next, I needed to find a CPU to pair well with the 5700 XT, and I ended up with Intel's Core i3-10100F. I'm a big fan of Intel's 10th generation because that was the generation that their i3s got hyper-threading. So this has four cores and eight threads compared to 9th gen i3s that only had four cores and four threads. And I got this one from eBay. There's a seller on there that has these for $53 with free shipping pretty consistently, uh, which I think is a great price. The 10100F did not come with a cooler, which was fine because it would have been the ugly stock Intel cooler anyways. And since aesthetics are a part of the company, Competition, a $20 cooler from Amazon like the ID Cooling SE 214XT is both cheap and stylish enough to justify the price. Paired with the 10100F is this MSI H410M Pro C motherboard, and this was not my first, second, or third choice. But LGA 1200 motherboards are pretty expensive new, way more than I could fit into a $400 budget. So I went the used route, searching both Newegg Open Box and Amazon Warehouse, and this board was one of the few that I could find. This was actually the cheapest one I could find. It was listed like new with missing components, which I thought was fine. Uh, I figured it didn't come with things like the manual, the extra SATA cables, the you know, driver or bio CD, that, that wouldn't have been an issue. But of course, knowing my luck, that's not all I was missing. It did not come with an IO shield. So yeah, in this build, I do not have an IO shield. This is not the first used motherboard I bought on Amazon that was missing it. But for the sake of this competition and the price that was at, uh, I just kind of had to go with this board to stay within budget. For memory, I went with the cheapest DDR4 kit I could find, and that was the 16 gigabytes of silicon power X power turbine rated at 3200 CL16. I should note though that the 10100F does not support memory running faster than 2666 mega transfer per second. So the set is actually running at that speed right now. It was actually cheaper to get this 3200 
uh, kit than a 2666 one. I don't know why. I grabbed the 512 gigabyte Team Group AX2 2.5 inch SATA SSD for storage. This was $20 brand new on Amazon. It's not the fastest SSD out there, but gigabyte per dollar, it's pretty hard to beat. Decent power supplies are the biggest pain when it comes to building low cost budget gaming PCs. It's been like this for a while due to price increases across the board. I ended up with this EVGA BP 550 watt unit, which is 80 plus bronze. This is ranked C on the popular tier list, which is the lowest tier that I would personally recommend using. I was able to get this used on Amazon for 45 bucks. It's not a huge discount from its regular $60 brand new price, but that $15 save was pretty noticeable when working with this small of a budget. This was one of the lowest price units that I could find that was at least C tier and capable of running the 5700 XT. Newegg, eBay, and my local market didn't have anything that could compete with this price. Last but not least, we have the case, the DIY PC Q3W, which I got for $60 with free shipping from Newegg. This is one of DIY PC's newer cases that launched earlier this year. I will admit that $60 is a bit much to be spending on a case when the overall budget is $400. But I still went for it anyways because I really wanted to build in this first hand. It clearly takes inspiration from the super popular O11 line of cases from Lian Li, Lee, uh, except it comes in at half the price and is equipped with three ARGB fans. So on paper and in person, it looks great. But I quickly found out why this case is so cheap and makes me hesitate recommending it to other people. Here's why. This uses pretty cheap fans. We're talking bottom of the barrel Molex centipede connectors, and it has one of the worst built-in RGB controllers I have ever used. So budget cases like this often have a built-in RGB controller so that you can still control the lights even if you're using older or lower end motherboards that don't have the proper five volt three pin ARGB header on them. Like the board that I'm using, it doesn't have it. So I have to use the built-in case controller to control the lights. Well, as you may have noticed throughout the video, the lights on this can't really be controlled. They make you think that you can control it, but you can't. You notice how it's kind of been changing different colors and at different points of the video, it's like doing different effects, even though I'm not touching it at all. So they have a connector that you can hook up to the reset button, which a lot of cases do this. So if you don't need your reset button, you can control the lights. See, so I'm pressing it up here and it's changing. So let's say I wanna to change to, let's say solid static colors. So I switch it to red and hopefully it stays on red, right? It's not, it's just gonna now cycle through. Now this isn't the cycle mode, that is the only solid color mode. So let's say, okay, um, you know, let's try to set it to rainbow mode. So now it's got that full spectrum rainbow unicorn puke stuff going on. Let's see this case, are you, are you gonna hold the effect? You hold it for a little bit, but I know you. You're gonna change it up to a completely different effect. The Molex fans on these, they're running at constant speed. They didn't give you good three pin or four pin, uh, you know, PWM fan connectors so that you can hook it to the motherboard and control. It's just Molex constant speed. They're not super loud, but they're not super quiet either. They are as expected for a case this cheap. You only go for this if looks is at the top of your list because I do admit it sets itself apart aesthetically from a lot of cases in this price range. And yes, I am well aware that these two side fans right here, which are supposed to be set to intake, they came in pre-installed set to exhaust, which is a kind of odd setup given that you got exhaust here in the rear and then also exhaust in the two side fans. This is just a very negatively pressured case. And um, yeah, I just left it because it looks better like this. And the temperatures actually aren't bad. You'll see later on the benchmarks, the temperatures are just fine because we're not using like the most powerful, crazy power hungry parts. All right, let's take a look at the build summary and price breakdown. I've conservatively rounded the individual prices up to the nearest dollar for easier viewing. We decided to exclude tax from the competition to even out the playing field since we're all located in different states with different tax rates. So that just makes it easier. Shipping is included though. There really wasn't too much wiggle room in the budget to really do that much more. Maybe if I was shopping at like a different point in time, I could have found some used deals that was cheaper than what I spent on some of these components and parts. But at the time that I was looking in my local marketplace it was pretty dry and the only thing worthwhile was that RX 57 XT that I ended up picking up local. Here's a quick montage of the build sequence which will be accompanied by some b-roll glamour shots.
All right, now let's take a look at how this build performs. I tested in 1080p because I think that's the most suitable resolution for a build in this price range and for the RX 5700 XT in there. It can do 1440p in some games, especially like the lighter esports titles uh, in indie games. Uh, but I usually don't like to test those, mainly because I think it's pretty obvious that this is going to get hundreds of FPS in games like CSGO, League of Legends, and Valorant. I like testing against more difficult to run games, ones where you question if a system at this price range can hang or not. Uh, so yeah, I tested at 1080p and everything was either at max settings or just like one preset below the max. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the benchmarks. And there you have it, the $400 PC that I put together to compete in a four-way PC build showdown against PC Tech Hustle, Pinky Tech, and the Net Guy. I'm hoping I did enough to secure a victory, but we'll just have to wait and see. The live stream to determine the winner between us four is scheduled for Thursday, June 29th at 5 p.m. Pacific time. It's gonna be on my channel. The benchmarks that you just saw are unrelated to the competition. Those were my own runs using my usual test suite to show you the capabilities of this build. But we have a separate set of benchmarks that we're gonna be doing specifically for the competition and those will be revealed during the stream. For the aesthetic scoring, we have a third party entity in charge of determining the ranking for all of our builds in a fair and unbiased manner. Then to wrap it all up, we're gonna see who can ultimately secure the W with their gaming skills in the various titles that we'll be playing uh, and we'll share those during the stream. Also, as I said at the start of the video, all four computers will be sold on Jawa. We've actually teamed up with Jawa. They will be live and available for purchase at some point during the live stream. So you're gonna have to tune in with a Jawa account ready to go if you wanna buy them. And uh, the discount code is gonna be for hundred dollars off. So yeah, keep that in mind. I think these, I think they're gonna move fast, but we're gonna have to see. So if you're interested in buying either mine or any of the other competitors' PCs, uh, you're gonna want to be on top of it. But yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for this video though. To see my competition and what this build is going up against, be sure to go and subscribe to PC Tech Hustle, Pinky Tech, and The Net Guy. They will be releasing their respective build videos on their channels around the time that I release mine uh, within the same day or maybe a day or two. Uh, so yeah, go and show them some love and check out their stuff. I'll add all the links to their channels and their build videos as they go live down in the description. With that said, I hope you all enjoyed this video and found it either useful or entertaining in one way or another. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of this build overall. 
anything you would do differently. Uh, I look forward to reading all your responses down below. And thank you as always for watching and for continuing to support the channel. Thank you to the channel members as always for their above and beyond support. Be safe out there and I'll see y'all down in the comments as well as the next stream and or video. Bye.